So it's also a great honor to be at your conference and make presentation. I value everybody's time, so that's very nice of you. And uh, my name is Yuri Grokovich. Uh, so I work at uh, Lehman College, which is part of City University of New York and a department called Earth Environmental Geospatial Sciences. And I'm a physical geologist, so my speciality is not just landslides, it's also coastal erosion. I use extensively geographic information systems. Uh, but lately, I was busy with landslides since uh, 2017. Um, and um, we did uh, several studies. I'm going to show you a couple and uh, make like a summary. So what, where we are going with this. And um, <clears throat> the... Um, uh, paper which we wrote, Implication of Slope Aspect, a case study of Hurricane Marie in Puerto Rico, is kind of like latest of my uh, exploration about uh, landslide uh, characteristics and specifically slope aspect. So that work um, is uh, my latest one and we plan to do more. Uh, we're looking for collaborators, we're looking for people who are interested in this. And, uh, you know, I'm going to make another presentation more... Uh, updated in American Geophysical Union in Chicago. Maybe you guys will be there. So I will be happy to uh, see you there. Maybe we have a beer <laughs> um, as a conference. It's gonna be in December in Chicago. Okay, so um, let's uh, move on with my study. So where it's all started. So here is a um, you know, map, as you can see, it's uh, Guatemala. Um, about uh, five years ago, we uh, wrote a paper um, with my colleague Elia Machado and uh, Jerome Melgar and Mar uh, Marta Gahrimani, and uh, it's called Improving Landslide Hazard Risk Mapping in Guatemala Using Terrain Aspect. So that work was done in uh, several areas. We went specifically Lake Atitlan, uh, Tsuhoma study. And the study was sponsored by Inter-American Institute for Global Change Research. Uh, so the po point was to assess impact of landslides on indigenous communities. And my part was just assessment of landslide, uh, JS mapping, and uh, basically providing some clarification what kind of landslide we're dealing with, how does it relate to hurricanes, and so on. So just uh, from the beginning, I want to say that um, the work which I am presenting is uh, relevant probably for now um, to the area of Caribbean, of Caribbean basin, Central America, where we have a lot of hurricanes. So this is a caveat uh, because maybe in other areas, uh, slope aspect is not going to be such an important factor as uh, in this area. So the three areas, as you can see, the big one is a study area by USGS, uh, United States Geological Survey, um, and elevations are pretty high in Guatemala, up to 2,500 meters. Um, and uh, that's work which we did there. And when we arrived, uh, they provided us with data. And so here is a data set. <laughs> and uh, I just uh, wonder if you can see a pattern here. Uh, I don't know how many of you are watching this right now, <laughs> um, but I always ask my students, I, I say to them, so can you take a look at this and uh, see the pattern? And of course, uh, I don't tell them what, what's going on. So probably like 80% out of 100 uh, say that, uh, yes, there is a pattern. If this is a river and this is a river, uh, then distribution of landslides is very strange, right? It's uh, sort of, you know, right there. Uh, but there is no landslide on this side of the river. So again, this is a river valley, which is going in that direction. And you can see uh, north is here, south is here. So this is a south eastern slope, what you see here. And the same thing you see here, it's a river and majority of landslides occurring on south eastern slope. Uh, if you look anywhere on this picture, this is a river also, you can see that distribution of landslide is primarily on south eastern slopes. And so this is how I uh, came up to uh, landslides. Last time I dealt with landslides in Ukraine. I am from Odessa and uh, I used to work in Odessa University. We did a lot of work on landslides. But when I came to United States, I 
didn't have much chance to work on landslides. So when I saw this, I was like, wait a second, this is something interesting. Why landslides occur only on southeastern side? And we're talking about Hurricane Stan. It's a remnant of Hurricane Stan. So uh, everywhere here, you see southeastern slopes affected much more. And that's how the work started. That's how I was curious. Observation and hypothesis we had was there should be some kind of pattern uh, probably uh, meteorological, climatological pattern that produces landslides on one side because uh, rocks here are pretty much the same. It's a weathered uh, core of weathering, basically. It's a hugely, you know, washed out material. So it's pretty much the same everywhere. But on some slopes, you get just more landslides, right? So there should be some other factors in geology. And so what we did, we did analysis. We took GIS, we uh, created elevation model, slope, aspect, and then we produced this diagram. So what you can see in the diagram is that the histogram of distribution of aspect is primarily 7, 8, right? Which is this number of degree, which is eastern, south, eastern slopes. Okay, so this is the category, which is mapped here. And here is a degree interval. So majority of landslides in Sahoma is occurring on southeastern slopes and eastern slopes. So then we uh, took the data, collected uh, data from images. Basically, we were digitizing landslides and we looked at aspect distribution at Lake Atitlan. And we got the same picture. So Lake Atitlan shows that majority of landslides, again, here is the peak of histogram, are located on eastern, southeastern slopes. And the same technique we used, we used the same digital elevation model, uh, the same slope aspect data, and uh, we overlaid them and, you know, digitized landslides, created big database, and we got the same results. So uh, then there is a, a paper by um, uh, USGS. Now this is a hurricane Mitch, and uh, that's a different hurricane um, than Stan, but they published extensive database. When we took it, we also realized that there are majority of landslides happening on eastern, south, eastern slopes. And so that's actually um, triggered our interest in, uh, in the subject and we published a paper where we uh, postulated that, you know, basically uh, the aspect, something that is overlooked. And when we were in Guatemala, we saw many, um, manuals and uh, you know books which people use in Guatemalan you know geological survey and everywhere uh, they had tables and variables but aspect was not one of them which was very peculiar because you know apparently aspect plays a huge role so we started looking for the evidence what what can happen what why do we have this phenomenon how can we explain it and uh, this is result of our statistical analysis. So again, this is the number of landslide used in analysis. So Homa, Stan 692, 11,000 landslides used in Lake Atitlan, 9,000 in USGS, Mitch. And mean aspect everywhere was very close. It's uh, southeastern slope, 144, 157, 168. Uh, here is a standard deviation, and this is the range. Uh, plus minus one standard deviation. So uh, the data which we analyzed at that time, we just published this year. So if you want to take this data and work with uh, data yourself, you can go to this website. It's um, uh, data in brief. It's uh, one of the new publications which allows people to download data and uh, anybody can use them and you know repeat your analysis and so on. So you're welcome to use our data and repeat analysis and let me know if we got something wrong. So uh, one of the uh, things which we found was related to the rainfall. And this is a paper, uh, there is not much written about Guatemala, but paper from 1965, uh, you know, uh, published findings from uh, Hortig, which is a meteorologist working for USGS. Uh, and what he wrote that upper air averages indicate easterly to east south easterly winds at levels from 900 millibars to 400. So 900 millibars, it's about elevation of that 
uh, mountain range which uh, where we worked, Tsukhom, Atitlan, uh, that's pretty much correspond to 2,300 meters elevation. And um, uh, that was actually indication that something is going on. So we looked at this paper um, and we realized that uh, rain season means what? It means hurricanes. It means some kind of uh, circulation. It's a, you know, huge circulation that occurs at this time. And a majority of it falls in the mountains, right? So. Um, we immediately made a connection to hurricanes and, uh, you know, we tried to figure out, okay, so maybe it has something to do with the direction of hurricane propagation and rotation of the hurricane. And so here is a map which you produced from uh, NASA data, the arrows showing direction of the wind. And this is the, from uh, NASA data on the wind distribution. And this is the during hurricane stand, 2005. Uh, so this is a propagation of hurricane. And as you see, when hurricane was propagating, there are two circulation uh, modes here. One is uh, from Pacific, which is working in that direction. So as you can see the wind here coming from Southeast. And then there is also another couple cells, one in the North, which is in a counter clockwise direction also, but it's uh, a little bit higher. So Guatemala kind of like in between, um, you know, cyclonic uh, directions. But generally, uh, our area of study allocated on the south of Guatemala, we didn't do much in this area. So this is where mountains are. And in the area of study, as you can see, direction of the wind is southeast. It's uh, moving towards south, you know, in from southeastern direction, right? Toward northwest. So that was... Uh, pretty much interesting uh, to see that. And we thought that might explain why do we have, you know, this issue with the uh, distribution of landslide on only one side of the valley. And then uh, the physical uh, explanation of that is called mountain shadow. Uh, this is the fact when you have uh, so-called wind-driven rainfall. So wind-driven rainfall was put together by Blake in, uh, in 2006. And this explains when winds uh, with uh, rain. So this is like, you know, hurricane can be the same thing, right? So when they come to the mountain, they drop in a lot of rain. Other side is dry. This one is wet. So a lot of wet material comes here. So this increase uh, moisture in the soil. And again, we're talking about, you know, Central America, Caribbean, it's all weathered uh, regolith, basically. It's very loose soil material. So uh, when this stuff get uh, wet and increased with increased moisture, it's very prone to landslide. So of course, uh, this side of the mountain would experience a lot of landslide and much drier one is not. So we thought that's pretty good. You know, that's very nice, you know, phenomenon. It's very clear. It's accepted by majority of scientific community. And uh, when Hurricane Maria occurred, we immediately looked into data. Data were published not immediately, but um, after a couple of years, I think in uh, 19 or 20, it took them a couple of years to digitize landslides. And so then we uh, found about the database, we downloaded it, and then we decided, let's take a look at Hurricane Maria and see if we got the same issue. So Hurricane Maria, this is a propagation. So here is a 1920. Those are days and mistaking, we made a mistake. We uh, put it's October, actually it's September. So, <laughs> you know, we found this mistake only when pa paper was going to publication. So uh, editors told us they can't do anything else. So we decided, okay, let's leave it like this. But all the data are from September. So data source is correct. And as you can see that uh, propagation over Puerto Rico, here is the Puerto Rico Island, right? So on 20th, that was a massive landfall of, of the hurricane. And so the study goal was to examine the role of the slope aspect in the distribution of Hurricane Maria triggered landslide using elevation data. We also used uh, LIDAR uh, data, so because it was available and we decided to see which one is better, LIDAR or SRTM. 
So uh, you can look at a paper for details, but generally in numerous landslide studies, the slope aspect is mentioned as one of the important factors. However, it is not included in the methodology. It's very rare you find that aspect is one of the important factors. People use slope, people use a variety of other things, soil moisture, but not actually aspect in many models. And so um, that was one of the you know, main issues, I think, which we deal with. We're trying to bring aspect um, of the slope back to game. Um, so here is our sort of hypothetical idea that hurricane is moving and hurricane propagating. So here is a position at time one. Uh, this is a position at time two. So they look like huge you know, like a chain, not chainsaw, but circular saw, you know, discs. <laughs> and then uh, this is a Puerto Rico, it's a point one. So as you can see, when a hurricane makes landfall, most likely you're going to get north, northeast, you know, uh, impact. So like coming mainly from the northern direction. But when hurricane passes away, you get more of that stuff from the uh, southeast. And so this is an uh, interesting, uh, you know, idea that, when hurricane propagates, it makes impact uh, on the terrain from different, uh, you know, points of view, right? So here is uh, more information. Here is the Puerto Rico. Uh, this is October 20 in the morning. So as you can see, uh, a lot of impact on the island actually happens from the north. And then uh, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, hurricane shifting over the island. And so we can get uh, more impact sometimes, you know, from eastern part. You can still get northern impact from north and mainly like from east and southeast. And this one is October 20. It's a 6 p.m., which is, uh, you know, the nighttime, 6 p.m. And uh, uh, hurricane already moving over Puerto Rico. And you get a lot of impact from the south, right? And so then hurricane disappears. And you see the arrows here become smaller. So wind speed de decreasing. Like at the beginning, you see the size of the arrows. This is a wind speed uh, from NASA data on wind uh, propagation. So it all mapped from NASA. And so that's uh, what we found. And then we did similar analysis. We uh, took uh, data, we overlaid with the aspect. We use SRTM data and LIDAR. So on the left side, it's all SRTM. On the right side is LIDAR. And as you can see, this is a number of landslides in relation to aspect, and that's from SRTM data. So you see a lot of north, northeast, and also you see southwest, right? And a little bit of western, northwest. So you see kind of like two main directions, you know, where uh, things are coming. And the same with the LIDAR. So more or less, they tell the same story. So conclusion is that uh, after Hurricane Maria impact, uh, we see a close association with northern direction followed by association with western and southwestern directions. And so we attribute this to Maria rotation and movement across the island. And it causes strong uh, wind-driven rainfall impact and so on. So there is also conclusion about vegetation, So, but you can read it in the paper. And, uh, and I think uh, basically this is it. So uh, the um, idea now here with a study is that uh, we're trying to see if we can do real time uh, prediction of landslides because most of the time people use a collection of data over hundred years and see where landslides are. They create maps of density or frequency ratio and so on. So, but it, it's all based on very, um, you know, like a sort of cumulative, you know, data set without uh, really addressing any physical force that produces landslides. So the only thing we have in real time is a movement of the hurricane. So if you know how hurricane moves and you can trace it and you can follow its path, then you can probably most likely try to predict landslides. And then you can make sure that people are warned. You can bring it into, um, you know, preparedness, uh, preparation and so on. And we can even model this kind of things because um, hurricanes come from different angles. They have different strengths. So if we can link that physical behavior of the hurricane with what's going on on the ground uh, in terms of terrain and aspect of slope primarily, I'm, I'm sure we can try to predict it, which uh, nobody predicted landslides yet. So this is kind of challenging task. And 
you know, maybe it's too much, but I don't know. <laughs> but that's what we're trying to do. Um, and if anybody is interested, uh, we can work together. Maybe you have some ideas. And like I said, I'm going to put it more together for American Geophysical Union Conference in December in Chicago. So maybe we have a time to discuss over beer or something. Okay. So this is it. If you have any questions, let me know. You can also uh, send me email. Uh, my email, I think, is available. Uh, and I will be happy to share with you any information I have. Thank you very much.